So what do I mean when I say that most Christians have no hope? Sometimes it's easier to explain what something is by explaining what it is not. Now, hope in the Bible is a, is a big problem for a lot of people. They say, you know, you've got to have hope in Jesus, and that's true, right? But they say, I don't want to hope that there's Jesus. I want to know that there's Jesus. That's, that's not it. If you think about Sean Connery, he gets thrown out of an airplane in a, you know, a James Bond movie, and you're thinking, oh, he has no hope. You know, but I'm watching the same movie, and I'm thinking, oh, he does have hope, because he's wearing a parachute underneath that jacket. His hope is in that parachute. See what I'm saying? We're not hope. He's not hoping that he has a parachute. He has hope because he has a parachute. We have hope as Christians, as followers of Jesus. We have hope because we are saved. We have hope. Our hope is in Jesus. Okay? I think that that's hopefully pretty clear. Now let's talk about something else further. Arrogance. All right? I, I would say that most Christians are arrogant. They, they do a lot of things that indicate that they're arrogant. But most Christians would respond and say, I am not arrogant. Now, they will admit that maybe Donald Trump is arrogant. They say, I am not arrogant. Well, again, let's look at what, let's, let's describe, let's explore what arrogant means by exploring what arrogant is not. Just like what we did with hope. The opposite of arrogant is humble. Humble. Now, Jesus explains that we've got to be humble. God explains to the Jews. He explained that they've got to be humble. If they will humble themselves, he will heal their nation. That's bound to sound familiar to you. Now, the Bible also says that arrogance and pride are an abomination. Pride equaling in the Bible, arrogance. Okay, because we say that, you know what, I'm proud of my grandkids. That's not an abomination. No, it's not. Pride, the pride that the Bible is talking about, is the pride that is equal to abomination. The opposite of pride and arrogant in the Bible is humble. All right? Now, what does God think about humble? I said that the Bible indicates that arrogance, arrogance and pride are an abomination. That's in, um, that's in Proverbs 16.5. But I said that a little wrong. All right? Because Proverbs 16.5 doesn't indicate that arrogance and pride is an abomination. It indicates that the arrogant man or woman is an abomination. It kind of flies in the face of, of love the sinner but hate the sin. In this case, apparently God hates. The word hates is in the Bible, the sinner. All right? That's, that's a problem. That is a big problem. Because if God hates the arrogant man, that means, as we just discussed, God hates the man who is not humble. The reason I said that most Christians actually are arrogant is because most Christians are not humble. Now, you know that your grandma went to church all her life when she was still alive. Maybe she's still alive, going to church all her life, and she's... She doesn't say anything bad. She's, she's what you would call a good Christian. Everybody, even atheists and, and people who have deconstructed, people who are not Christians, all Christians, call grandma a good Christian. Because what makes her stand out is she's humble. The Bible says in Psalm 149, verse chapters, Psalm chapter 149, Verse 4, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Now, I would say, just, just briefly, that we Christians know that, we followers of Christ, I should start saying, we know that, that faith without works is dead. Now, what saves a person is his faith. His faith specifically that God sent him, he died, and he was resurrected. That is um, 
I think that's Romans 10, 9. Yeah, I may be wrong about that. But um, that's it's faith that saves us. It's works that indicates that we are saved. Okay? Now, in this case, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people, he adorns the humble with salvation. Salvation. Okay? It's not being humble that saves us. It's hum being humble that indicates that we are saved. Just like works indicates that we are saved, being humble indicates we are saved. Most Christians are not home humble. Let's face it. We have an increasing number of people who just don't believe. All right. Most Christians now are not humble. They, they, they arrogantly, without humility, without humbleness, boycott. Okay, what is, what is important to Christians is, I, I say frequently in my videos, that the salvation of others, spreading the gospel, is not the Christians, the modern Christians, priority. It's fighting abortion and fighting, fighting homosexuals and fighting gay marriage. Now, I'm, obviously, I'm talking about inside the United States because people know that in many countries overseas, there's, there's no problem. These are Christians. These are followers of Christ. People in the United States increasingly are indicating that they are not humble. They are not followers of Christ. And the reason I say, the reason I said that Christians have no hope is because for the Lord takes pleasure in his people, he adorns the humble with salvation. I don't care whether you were born, statistics say that most Christians are born, become Christians between the ages of 4 and 14. That's the, that's the window. That's the 4, 14 window. Most people become Christians then. I would, I, I, I would go as far as to say that most people between the ages of 4 and 14, when apparently they become Christians, they dedicate their life to Christ, they they accept Jesus into their heart. Most Christians don't know, don't really believe that Christ was resurrected, that a dead man was walking around a few days later. Most people don't believe that. Now you would say, yeah, but, yeah, but a lot of them do. Well, I would say that most of the United States identifies as Christians. That's millions, hundreds of millions of people. The Bible says, gate to hell is wide. The gate to salvation, to the kingdom of God, is narrow. And very few people find that path. Hundreds of millions, very few. That math doesn't. That math doesn't math. If I, if I found myself being very concerned and being about the homosexual, about transgender, about abortion. If I found myself very concerned about that to the point that I was, oh, I lost my humility. I lost my humbleness. I conducted myself without humility. I would be less concerned about if I thought about it. I would think about it and I would be less concerned about abortion and the homosexual and the transgender. I would become more concerned about my salvation because most Christians currently have no 